the la is predictable. It gets very normal in the plural. It's no surprise to see orum, aurum, and orum. Is carries across to every gender. This is predictable and normal. And again, the is is the same for the masculine, the feminine, and the neuter. So far, you've had some experience with the imperative present active, obviously. That's the mood for commands. This is the tense, and this is the voice. The imperative is the mood for commands. Is something that you've worked on before with different um, conjugations, only the first and second conjugations, I believe. And the imperative, you have to remember, only occurs in the second person singular and the second person plural. It only occurs in you singular and you plural. I'll often write y'all or or use, or something like that, some local variant of a dialect, but of course, the proper English is just you. You have to know that it's plural or singular. To conjugate it, the steps are very simple. You take the second principal part. You should have noticed by now that you always take the second principal part no matter what kind of present tense you're doing. Then you drop the same old pattern, the re for the first conjugation, the re for the second conjugation from the second principal part, the re for the fourth conjugation, and then for the third and third I, you drop the ERE -E or the ERE. -E. Then you put on the endings. For the first conjugation, you add nothing to it. So, for example, amare would become ama. In the plural, you drop the RE -E, and it becomes amata. Second conjugation, you add nothing. So monera would just be mone. In the plural, I'm oh, sorry, I put it in the wrong place. In the plural, it would be moneta. Let me clarify the chart that gets re-edited when I import it. For the first conjugation, you add nothing for the second person singular and TE for the second person plural. For the second conjugation, you add nothing for the second person singular and you add TE for the second person plural. Note also that in the fourth conjugation, you add nothing for the second person singular and you add TE for the second person plural. Often the first, second, and fourth behave like each other. And then, as I've mentioned, the third conjugation and the third I often behave like each other. For the third conjugation, you add E for the second person singular and E for the second person singular. You add I-T-E for both conjugations in the second person plural. Again, look at that chart one more time. For the first and second conjugation, you add nothing or TE. For the fourth conjugation, you add nothing or TE after you drop the re, re, era, era, re. For the third and third I conjugation, you add E or ITE. So let's look at the examples. You'd have Amara for the first conjugation would become Ama in the second person singular and Amata in the second person plural. This would translate as Love as a command, second person singular. The other one would conjugate as or translate as love in the second person plural. Very difficult to make that distinction in your English translation. Look at an example of a third conjugation verb. You'd start out with the second principal part, mitra. You would drop the ere because it's a third conjugation. And then to the third conch, so you have mit, that's what you have, and then you'd add to that, because it's a third conjugation, an e. And for the plural, the second person plural, you'd add an i-t-e. Look at an example of a third conjugation. You start out with capra, you drop the e-r-e, -E, and then you add an e to that. And to the plural, you would add an i-t-e. These are the commands for the second person singular up top, and the commands for the second person plural are on the bottom. 
couple more examples. If you looked at a third conjugation, you could do, for example, trahera. You drop the ere because it's a third conjugation. And then for the second person singular, you'd add an e. And for the second person plural, you'd add ite. That's a third conjugation example. Third i, if you have incipera, you would drop the ere. You'd add the e for the second person singular. For the second person plural, you add ite. And for a fourth conjugation, if you had aldera, you'd simply drop the re, then add te for the second person singular, and add, sorry, <laughs> don't add te for the second person singular. You'd add nothing for the uh, second person singular in a fourth conjugation, and then for the second person plural, you would add te. So they have some things in common, the second person plural and in te for third, third i, and fourth. All the second persons plural and in te, it's just a matter of how you form them. And then the second person singulars, at least for the third and third i, have something in common, as they normally do. And just to show you one more time, a first and second conjugation, if you had optare, you drop the re for that, add nothing for the second person singular, and for the second person plural, you'd add te, just like all the other conjugations, and in te. Finally, for the second conjugation, you would have monera, you drop the er, and then you'd either add nothing for the second person singular, or for the second person plural, you'd add, that's right, te. You drop this, you take the second principal part in each case, you drop the re, the re, the ere, the ere, and the re again. First and second and fourth follow a similar pattern. In that you drop the re and you add nothing and te, nothing and te, nothing and te. Whereas third and third i follow the similar pattern in that you add, drop ere in both cases and then add an e and an ite. You add an e and an ite. Not too complicated, but it's a lot to do at once. You'll have to practice this. And at this point, you know so many verbs, and you know how to do a verb synopsis. So there's a great deal to keep uh, straight. Mostly what you're focusing on is being able to read, but the more you can actively conjugate, the better and faster you can read, the easier it'll be for you. And of course, you'll be tested in this class on being able to conjugate these things, so you have to practice them. Skype me with questions that you have on the mechanics of this. One more time, nicely typed out. First conjugation, second conjugation, fourth conjugation, third and third I. Here are your normal imperative present actives. I'll abbreviate that as imperative present active. Mood, tense, and voice. Only appear in the second person singular, you, and the second person plural. But in each case, you're going to translate them as a command. So this would be listen, and this would be listen. Can't really tell them apart in English. This would be C's, and this would be C's. You're commanding you, or you're commanding you plural to do something. One note that the textbook does not mention, there are four common and important exceptions to the above models. The word duco ducara, that means to lead. The word dico dicara means to say or speak. Facio facara, that means to make or do. And pharaoh, pharaoh means to carry or bear, as in bear weight. The imperative present active for these verbs are duke and ducata. That's missing an E in the second person singular. Deke and decata, same problem. Fock and focata, 
same problem, and one more. Fair and ferita, all of them are missing the E in the second person singular. That's the problem with them. That's what makes them irregular. Fair also has one R, and you might expect two R's. Uh, you really shouldn't expect two R's because you are dropping the RE from its second principal part. So there's a typo there, sorry. F-E-R, drop the R-E, and then add the I-T-E. Pretty simple patterns to figure out for the imperative, present active, and four irregular but very, very common verbs. You use these verbs all the time. You'll see them regularly. And that's the end of the lesson. Pretty short one. Skype me with any issues or problems.